So today is a special day in the liturgical life of the church. Today is what's known as epiphany. Now, if you look it up in a dictionary, an epiphany is an aha moment. It's a moment where there is a discovery that is made, a, an exciting discovery that perhaps you didn't understand before. So you have this epiphany moment. But in the church, epiphany stands for the time when God revealed to the Gentiles who the Messiah was, who the Christ was. That was this epiphany moment, this time of revelation and realization among the Gentiles that Jesus was, in fact, the Messiah. Now, the story that is used to describe Epiphany is the story of the wise men or the magi who journeyed to see Jesus, who they believed was born as king of that new region. But here's the thing. I remember back in the day when I first realized or first was told that those magi weren't actually there on the day that Jesus was born. They had been journeying from the time that Jesus was born, but it took them a year, maybe two years, before they actually arrived there. Well, you know what? That and a couple other things about the story begin to open it up to me in a new way. You see, sometimes that's how scripture is. You read a story one time at one place in your life, and you discover certain things, but then you read it again, and you see other things that you hadn't seen before. Well, you know, that's what happened for me this year. I was looking at this story and trying to figure out how, how, do, I, how do I reinterpret this story in a way that is meaningful, and, and, and it's a story that we've heard so many times. I mean, what more can you say? What new things can you say? And actually, when I read the story, it came right there in those first few verses for me. It was my little epiphany moment about this story. So the story is actually told in Matthew's gospel, in Matthew's gospel only, chapter 2. Let me read those first two ver verses of what happened. <clears throat> After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. All right, so here's what I found in that story. The first thing is that the Magi were people who were, um, some would re refer them as, as astronomers or stargazers, but they truly believed in their own religion that God or the gods communicated through celestial bodies in the sky, through stars, through planets, whatever it was that was up in the sky. They believed that somehow God was communicating in those, uh, those uh, objects in the sky. And so for them, as they looked to the sky, they saw something unique, and for them, they thought, well, what this means is there has been a new king that has been born but they didn't really understand all there was to know about who this new king was born. And yet, here's the thing, whatever they saw in the sky was enough to motivate them to take this one to two year long journey from where they were all the way to where they thought this new king was born. And they were probably imagining a king who would live in a palace, the, the son of a current king who was born because that's how things worked back then and so they went to the palace they went to the place where those religious folks those folks who ruled the area would have obviously known that a king was born so they come and they ask them where's this new king probably looking around and not really seeing anything that looked like a new king being born so in other words here's these these magi, these stargazers, these wise people from the east, somewhere maybe in Persia, in Asia, and they journey all this way, knowing that something is happening, but not fully, completely aware of what it is. But for them, it's worthy journey. Here's the other thing that I discovered in the midst of that. I also thought to myself, you know what? For some reason, God decided to communicate to these magi, these wise men, in their own language, in the way that they themselves would be searching 
that there is something special going on that you need to know about. God communicated to them in their own language, in their own way, and gave them something that they could understand, at least in part, enough to encourage them to move forward and to find out what was at the end of this journey. Okay, so I wonder, can God do the same thing for us? Can God communicate to us in ways that we may be familiar with, ways that we may normally want to search, but reveal to us something much bigger and much bolder beyond those simple searches? So this leads me to this Sunday. So this Sunday is what we call in our church here, Star Gift Sunday. And I know there's other churches that do this now as well. The first time I heard about this, I thought, oh, this sounds a little strange. But what happens is when you come into the worship service, you get a star, and on that star, there's a word. And that word is to be a word that you use throughout the year in prayer and, and in other ways to perhaps just ask God, show me how this word, this idea that is in uh, on this star, how this can teach me something about you, how it can teach me something about me, God, how it can teach me something about our relationship. And so on this Sunday, for those coming into the worship service, we're going to give you one of these stars. Now, it may be a star that has a word on it like this, hope. Then again, it could be a star that has a word on this like discipline. <laughs> now, if I get a choice of what one I want to pick, I'm going to pick hope, right? Because that's much more feels like a much more positive word than discipline. But in the same way, maybe God needs to communicate to you something about discipline or something about hope that maybe takes you into a new place in your relationship with God. So that's the idea. You come in, you take a star, you put it somewhere so that throughout the year you can see it. Maybe you remind yourself in prayer, you know, Lord, help me see what you were trying to communicate to me this year through this concept of discipline or hope or whatever it is, the word that you get. Now, if, if you are not one that attends our worship service in person, that's fine. What we have is on our website. If you go to our website, um, brightonpresbyterian.org, if you go to our website and, um, and search for it, you can go to the worship and there is a, there is a link there that says star gifts. And you can go to that link and you can push that link and it will generate uh, a random star word for you. And that can be your star word for the year. Write that word down. Find out how God's going to reveal to you some truth beyond that word or through that word. So that's the idea. Epiphany is this aha moment. Epiphany is a time where God can reveal to us something new. For those magi, it was by following that star that led them to the infant Jesus where they came and they worshiped. For you and I, it could be that word on that star or some kind of experience that will happen to you. But the key is to continue to look for the ways that God is communicating to you. Because God will communicate to you in your own language, in perhaps a unique way, a truth that we need in order to have the fullness of what God has called us to.